Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I'm going to show you an incredible puzzle, one that you've maybe never seen before. Maybe you've seen the idea, but not this particular one. It's so amazing and it's so complicated. I really hope you enjoy it. So it's white to move here, and the goal is to checkmate black in I think 19 moves. And you have to figure out how to do that without stalemating black. So currently black's pawns are going down the board like this. So they only have one legal pawn move at the moment. All of these pawns are immobile. And these pawns, of course, can't move because there are pieces in front of them. And the, which, means, which then means this rook can't move, this queen can't move, and this knight can't move because of the pin. So in terms of black's legal moves here, they have these rook moves to these squares and this pawn move. But it's white's move. So try to see if you can figure out the first move the first move might be kind of obvious, but then there's a sequence you have to figure out after that, and that's where the real fun begins. So if you want to take a second, try to figure it out. If not, just sit back and enjoy the ride. Before I show the solution, I will quickly just encourage you to subscribe. Half of the income that I earn on this channel goes directly to charity, so every subscriber helps me out a lot. Okay, let's get started here. So I'll kind of start with the obvious, which is that if you take this rook and promote to a queen, they play d3, and you have no way to avoid stalemate here. So I guess I should say no good way. You could give up your rook, but then you'll lose the game because these pawns are going down the board. So you have no good way to avoid stalemate. The best you can do is take a draw, so just make a move, a random move, and it's a draw. So you can't promote to a queen, and the same applies to a bishop, Right, there's nothing that you can attack here. And the same applies to a rook. You capture and promote to a rook. There's nothing you can do that can create a move for black. They're going to play d3 no matter what. So your goal is to create a move for black. Great, how do I do that? Well, you promote to a knight. Clearly, right? Now here, they play d3. Now here's the big question. You have two moves here that create a move for black. They can take, in both cases, the pawn can take the knight. Where do you go and why? This is a really hard puzzle. This is a really hard part of the puzzle. You probably saw the first move, but did you see this part? Okay, so I'll tell you the answer and I'll tell you why, but I'll tell you why this one doesn't work. So d6 does not work, but f6 does. Okay, why doesn't d6 work? Let's put the knight on d6. Now, it gets even crazier. I'm already excited here. It gets even crazier here. Black has to take this pawn, or take this knight, with a particular pawn. If they take it with one pawn, they draw. If they take it with the wrong pawn, they lose. So, just as a pop quiz to you, which pawn capture do you think? The e pawn or the c pawn? Which pawn capture leads to a loss for black? It's crazy, right? So the answer is the C pawn. If you take with the C pawn, this leads to a loss. And let me show you why really quickly. You play C7, and they're just going to keep moving their pawns, right? They have no moves. You play, oh, they play C7. <laughs> yeah, I said it, didn't do it. I promote to a knight. Again, they play D4. And now I play knight B6. And the whole point is they have more tempi to run all the way down the board. I play a7, they play b5, I promote to a knight, and look at this. In this position, you have to maneuver your knight to give checkmate to this king, maybe somewhere like here. You need to find a four-move route because they're going to promote one, two, three moves. So you play something like knight c7, this will be one way to do it. They play b3. Do you see the way to win here? Do you see how to get to this square? Or to get to another square that you think is going to work? Knight b5. They go here. You take this pawn. They promote. And look at this. You play knight f3 and you win. Right? So they can't. So going back all the way, they can't take with the c pawn. That whole sequence is pretty much forced, right? By nature of the fact that they only have one move on each turn. Okay, so they can't take with the c pawn right here. 
If they take with the e pawn, why is this different? You might wonder, what is the difference here? They take with the e pawn, now it's a draw because this same idea doesn't work. So if I play e7 and then do this whole thing again, even in this position, I have two choices in this complicated puzzle. So without getting too crazy, I'll just show if I do the same idea, trying to give the knight away like this, I'm one move too short. Look, now I have no moves if I'm black. These pawns are all immobile. All right, just to give you a sense of how crazy this is, I don't want to go down every single line, but that's the beginning is really important to understand. So you can't go knight d6 if you want to win this game. That's the point. So you promote to a knight, they play d3, you play knight to f6, you go the right direction. Wonderful. Now they have two choices, take with the g pawn or take with the e pawn. If they take with the g pawn, what do you do? Well, right now you can't move this pawn because if you do, it's stalemate. You're blocking the pawn's movement. So what do you do? You play. I'll move the king somewhere. Where do I move the king? You play king f4, we'll say. f5. I think this is actually a draw. Wait a second here. This is actually a draw. So I'm missing something here. So if g takes, what is the win? I think I'm for, oh, 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 you play this move? Okay, hold on. Now I'm, I'm seeing it more and more here. I think this might work. Okay, sorry about that. I'm seeing, I'm doing this like real time. And I, I looked at this puzzle before the video. I think g3 and then look at this. You play this. And now you're, you're in the way here. So you have to move out of the way. I think this is right. And then they push the pawn. Okay, this is right. Sorry about that delay there. It took me a second to understand. So let me just make sure I make that point clear to anybody who's watching. You put the knight here. If they take with the g pawn, you play g5, and that gives away this pawn. And now they're going to have two tempi to push. I play g7. They play g4. I promote to a knight. They're now locked in. I put the knight right here. They take. I have to go up the board because if I go back, they're just going to push again. So I go up the board. They push. I push. And this pattern repeats itself. This is such a cool puzzle. Hopefully you're seeing how in, in real time I enjoy these puzzles. And if you enjoy them, like the video. Help me out here. So they're playing this. Look at this box that they're creating. All right, they have this little box here. We'll call it a target. So... I play knight d6, they take, and now this pattern repeats itself. Look at this. This is crazy. That's if they take with the g pawn. They don't have to take with the g pawn. So we're going to look at what happens if they take with the e pawn. And look at this. Just like before, you have one tempo. So you play something like here. Is there a way I can do it in style without capturing this? Um, here, here, here. Even better. So look at this mate. This is ridiculous. Look at this mate. That is checkmate and that hurts. Okay. That's if they take with the G pawn. Just like I said, they don't have to take with the G pawn. They can take with the E pawn. So let's go all the way back really quickly here. And you promote to a knight. They play this move. You play knight F6. We looked at this move. What happens when they take with the G pawn? If they take with the E pawn, is it any different at all? I don't think so. I don't think it is. So if I play this move g5, they can take and then just see if we can calculate this. Push, push, promote to a knight, push, put the knight here, capture, push. Look at this. This is amazing. And then just like before, it leads to the same variation. g5, they capture, you push, they push. You push, they push again. This is incredible. Look at this. They take c7, d5, you promote to another knight. They lock their pieces in and look at the way this is going to work. Look at the tempi. 
that you're, or I guess it's just a tempo, the one tempo that you have. So here, we'll go here. I'm thinking about this way, like this. Now there's no pawn to capture, like before there was a pawn to capture. Here, and look at this mate. This puzzle is absolutely amazing. If you have never seen this before, let me know. If you have seen it, let me know as well. That's mate. So all of the variations lead to mate if you put the knight on f6. If you put the knight on d6, it can either be a draw or, if black plays incorrectly, a win for white. But of course, you, you assume black plays best. So all the way back, this position is a mate in 19 moves. How far were you able to see? Let me know. See if you got past the first real fork in the road with figuring out the night hop and whether you chose D6 or whether you chose F6. But that's an incredible puzzle. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. Be sure to like and subscribe. All that stuff helps me out so much. Thank you for so much. That's it for now. Bye.